All right, good morning, everyone. Fudge you, where are we going today? Cool, good morning, everybody. And thank you for helping me film, Noah. We are going, we're on the drive up to Todo Santos, Saludos, Mescadero right now. I have somebody from Mexico City that is looking to do a kind of like high-end development. They need beachfront, the, they need 200 meters of beachfront. So we're going to get some drone footage and do some due diligence for a buyer that wants to do uh, a smaller residential community with a little complex on it. And um, we're looking on the Pacific side today. And like I said, I, I think the Pacific side is uh, absolutely blowing up from, we just passed Rolling Hills. So like you have Kavira, you have Diamante, and then you have Rancho San Lucas. And you basically have Rolling Hills. And like after that, up until like Cerritos, it's basically just kind of like open land. So one of the requirements is that this guy really wants to have power. But 
other properties that are completely off grid. You know, I ask, this is what I ask clients, I'm like, would the dentist in Chicago come down here and live? You know, no, they want something that's like turnkey. Uh, they want to be able to use air conditioning in the uh, summertime. You know, a lot of that pulls and draws way too much power. Um, which is another benefit of the Pacific side is that you do have cooler temperatures. So off grid can actually work. You know, on the East Cape, it, it gets bacon in the uh, summertime. It does. So uh, it's unlivable. Part of the yeah, house. and I've seen people that live off grid in um, with solar panels, and it's it's just not 100% there yet, unless you're living a very minimalistic lifestyle. But if you're like you know in Chicago and you're used to having the AC run in and the TV on and the washer, you know, and all this stuff. That's going to change significantly when you move, quote unquote, off grid. So uh, there's a there's a few variables, but that's why I'm doing this today. We're going to record some content. Some of this is going to be used in this video, but a lot of it is just going to be sent to the buyer, and uh, we'll see what happens, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, the views out here are amazing too. I'm looking out. There's a bunch of whales jumping. The, so this is the time of the year. I mean, um, the weather right now is incredible. Like I'm not using air conditioning at all, and I think it'll be like that until April, May-ish, um, especially on the Pacific side. You know, it's it's early in the morning. We got up early to do this, and um, it's we got a long sleeve on. When I go walk the dog in the morning, you have to have a long sleeve on just because it's chilly. You know, so this time of the year, in my opinion, is the best. You know, we're in January, February. You have the whales here really good views. I came out here on Sunday to take the family to Cerritos and uh, like the waves were pretty pretty big on this side so the surfing gets better in the winter time on the Pacific side and that's really when people go to like Cerritos and uh, San Pedrito. One other question Fletcher I just noticed so like 15 minutes outside of uh, Cabo towards Todos Santos we switch municipalities to La Paz what changes with the municipality changing? I mean, we're a long ways from La Paz, but Todos Santos, Los Barrios, everything on this side up is... This is this is another really important thing. So we just crossed into uh, the La Paz jurisdiction, right? We were in Cabo. So like if you're building in Cerritos, Todos Santos, um, you know, anywhere right there, Rancho Nuevo, those places you're submitting your plans to La Paz like your construction and everything has to go through La Paz and get approved there whereas if you're in Rolling Hills you know that is Cabo right so it, dep it, it depends which municipality you're submitting to and for example I know in the Total Santos area you have an allowed uproar from locals that feel like too many people are coming in and doing stuff especially if you're trying to do like a condo building right because it's basically less dense than Cabo where you just have like mm -hmm. you take an area like Tazol it's like condo city right so I think that's a big thing what this is a good point too one of the lots that I'm gonna be looking at is actually actually like registered agrarian you know for farm use and obviously we're not gonna be my client wouldn't be buying this to farm mm -hmm. so that entails possibly a very long or longer process and I have to disclose that to the buyer like hey we need to make sure that in the due diligence period we can figure out that we can do what we want to do on this lot so the other lot actually has like a PDU a plan desarrollo urbano so you have like how many floors you can build how much of the land you can build on and things like that which makes it very clear and it's it's not a bad thing that the other one is zoned like for farming it just like it might be more of a process and at that point you are dealing with the La Paz municipality so in my experience I would want to be using a builder uh, an architect that is familiar with that area versus somebody that's um, submitting those plans to San Jose which would be where you submit to anything in the in the Los Cabos area what about uh does that change like property taxes, utility bills? You know, I don't, for property taxes, it, it shouldn't change at all. And uh, utility bills, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't really think that that would change as much either. I don't know. Okay. I mean, um, to 
me, I think it would be very equivalent, just depending on um, where you're at, you know. So, uh, the Baja in general, from my understanding, is, is quite, you know, and it, it depends, you know, like, is it off grid? You know, um, but as far as CFE and power, for example, like on the Pacific side, right now we're in January, February, March, like, these people literally might have a power bill that's like $20 a month. Oh yeah, there's no because use. Because you're not, no use like you're just using, right it's really just light bulbs. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously if you're like using TV and stuff, but the big, the big thing for electric here is the air conditioning, which you're using, I don't know what, seven months, eight months out of the year, seven months out of the year, depending on where you're at. Some people even less than that. So that is the big one. Um, but as far as, for me, I'd, I'd be much more concerned with like a zone. And then if we're like talking about this guy who wants to do like luxury places, I don't think, you know, even if there's an uptick in the electric bill, that that's going to like sway the due diligence of the product. Yeah, no, it's just a question. Yeah. I'm yeah, no, no, but it's, it's a, it's a, to be honest, it's a question that I don't necessarily know how much that differential in, in CFE or electric bills would be. Fair enough. No, you do make a good point though. Like the, I mean, I've got a friend that lives out in Pescadero that I go visit sometimes and, um, sit out in Toto Santos a few times and even like we'll escape and go out there in like August because um, it's just I mean it's still really nice in the evening you know you yeah, don't I was, you know, I was in July sure I was, was in there. July in Pescadero I actually have a video from uh, the Tuna Project and I actually had a long sleeve on yeah exactly so, so I'm sure that those are probably cheaper anyways just because you know you're not using as much power so Pacific gets a, a Pacific breeze and it's nice cool weather but alright thanks for the 